Oh, it feels so good. Mm. I wonder why we brought a tent. We may can save that weight now. <laughs> it was awesome. You want to make it how well I slept? What? I slept so well. Like earplugs. <laughs> I put them on, I didn't know what, what was going on all night. <laughs> we got in uh, down here pretty late last night. It was like three in the morning, I think, when we went to bed. Um, got ourselves a little bit of dinner and us and some water and we just crashed right here in the open. We didn't have time to set up any shelters, but the weather was good, so we didn't bother. It was nice sleeping under the stars. Got the meat hanging in a tree last night. Got the hide laid out to cool on the rocks, let the cool air drop the temperature of those two things before before we just put it inside some plastic and bury it in the lake. So the meat up here in this tree feels pretty cool. Right below this waterfall I made a little little pool I'll show it to you all right well I've got that uh, bear hide the skull inside a garbage bag got that one buried under rocks in the creek as well so that's it got it all done we're ready to pack up and go find another bear I don't know what's gonna happen today. You know, if Pedro sees another bear, you can probably shoot it. Pedro's the kind of guy who's just really nice and wants to help other people out. So yeah, hope Pedro sees it because he'll, he'll, he won't want to shoot it. <laughs> I just want to understand bear hunting. That's why I came here for, not to shoot the bear. So you're shooting next. Okay. Depending on the size of the bear. No. Oh, oh always, <laughs> always. Then we may have to do paper, scissors and Let's see. Looks like a lovely day. I may get to dry out my clothes. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. <laughs> dry out your clothes from the debacle yesterday. I hope that we get to see some bear in some new country because that country looks like really nice. So hoping to see more bears, try to understand better what the bears look like, what they eat, what they do. And if we get to shoot a, another one, it's okay, but I wouldn't mind not packing meat out today. <laughs> so. We'll see. Hiking up. It's been a long day, really warm, and we haven't seen anything at all. 
I'm really surprised by the low density of animals that are in these areas. They look amazing. We could have, I mean, the amount of country that you can glass, it's huge. And we haven't seen not a single bear, not a single deer. So, I don't know. These areas must be pretty tough during the winter time. That being said, we keep working our way, glassing, and hopefully sooner or later, I'm pretty sure that we will find something. They look tiny, they are so far away. We just spotted two bears. Are they like really small or they are really far away? Are they really small or they are really far away? Yeah, they are super dark. All right, Pedro just spotted two bears quite a long ways away up in a canyon and they're just out walking from right to left. Looks like the one's feeding. Kind of hard to tell size right now, they're pretty far away, but we're spotting bears and it's 1.40 in the afternoon, so it's gonna get good, real good. this little glassing spot and we've been glassing for most of the day uh, it's windy as I'll get out picked up a cu couple cubs and a mama and no boars yet so we um, who knows we still got a little time this evening to maybe pick something up but tomorrow morning we're gonna probably blast off to the top get some elevation and if we don't see anything here first thing get way up top pick up a thousand 1500 feet and then glass back down to the bottom so we'll have a good day tomorrow of uh putting on some miles yeah it sounds like a plan i mean we are in the right spot i mean we're on a beautiful spot have you seen our camp beautiful sight tomorrow we can wake up and glass straight from inside the tent which i think is going to be good because it's a bunch of rain coming from that side. Have we checked the weather on the Garmin in Ridge or not? I haven't checked. I don't know, but the weather has definitely changed. It's super windy, it's suddenly it's hot, suddenly it's super cold, rain, so I don't know. We'll see. So we saw three bears today. We don't see a lot of bears move in weather like this. They like the sunshine. But the small bears and the sows, we'll see them out more in the rain, I think because they know the boars are tucked in. But, ah, slow day. That's all right, we had a really, really awesome day yesterday, so. But I think we're gonna hike to the top of that mountain over there, or to the top of that mountain over there. But one way or another, tomorrow we're gonna hike to the top of a mountain. I, I can guarantee it. It's gonna be a bit of a grind, but we're gonna find some studs. Uh, keep on glass and I'm gonna I'm gonna take a little I'm gonna take a little <clears throat> relax and break for a minute here. Wake me when you see something. It's so nice when Brian is inside the tent. Like it's way more fun. No. Dark black. No, it's a dark black one. Yeah, I only look for the black ones, mainly because they're easier to see. Yeah, there's a, such a good mix in here. It's pretty cool. I'd like to see a big blonde one of these days. But yeah, you never know. It's always tiny blonde. So, Pedro brought a paper mache air pad. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> That takes Ooh. that takes some guts. That feels like That's, a blade of grass could take that down. It's so light <laughs> and so packable <laughs> until it's not functioning. I'm telling you, this is like wow, that's the lightest material. Paper mache. It's 250 grams. I don't know in ounces, but 
Well, you'll find out that it'll be flat here. <laughs> Give it two more days. <laughs> yeah, it will be flat. The way they save with this mattress <laughs> allowed me to bring sleepers. <laughs> <laughs> I've had my share of punctures. Uh, now I go with a bit thicker air pad than I used to. I have a repair kit. <laughs> Good, you'll be needing it a lot. I'll be shocked if it doesn't get a hole. Eight more days and yeah. I'll be shocked. It take it. Karma is gonna get on you and you're gonna get a puncher. <laughs> and if not, I will just stab it when I. And that wouldn't bother me at all because that's a way of life for me. There's a river right there. You just blow it up, stick it under the water, figure out the hole, patch it. Problem is when you don't have a body of water to get it into, you really can't see where the hole is coming from. It's, it can be a nightmare. But yeah, that's that's impressive. <laughs> Ultra life. I, I say we should make bets on when it will pull, pop. Before day five. <laughs> yeah, we should like wager five. some bets. Like, okay. By the morning after the next camping spot, it's over. What day? Is that? Probably, probably two days from now. It's done. Done so. So day four. Well, yeah. well, one thing I should mention, I have the exact same pad. Oh! oh. <laughs> so what are you saying, Brady? I'm saying that we are smart because we have the same pad. So it's 50-50 have... who is right here. I think we're right now. I think we are Tides vision, have turned. like visionaries. Yep, you know? We like... are total visionaries. <laughs> we will prove to them lightweight always wins when it comes to the mountains. You know what I want? And then he packs the a the huge spotting the scope. reward. <laughs> And then, and then he packs that huge sporting scope. That's why I but he, bring he goes super light. Heads. Did you bring like a ultra robust ground cloth or did you just like roll the dice with like a little sill nylon jobber? It's a, it's a Tyvek. It's a Is it Tyvek? Yeah. He's got the Tyvek. What's, what's, what's Pedro got? Is it Tyvek? It's sill nylon. Sill nylon. <laughs> sill nylon. Yeah. A quality ground tarp. Like I'm putting Tyvek the works pretty well. Hunter pot underneath it. Yeah. Oh, you'll be fine. Anything you can, you might want to put underneath your uh, pad. Basically, you guys. <laughs> yeah, Brady's right. When you sleep underneath your pad. That's what you're gonna have to do. One of you guys is going flat between day five and seven. Last year I popped my other one, so I think I'm good for a little while. So, so who's gonna go first? Pedro will go down first, and then Brady like a day or two after. <laughs> That's just code for prone to fail. Ultra light. Confess, so far, what's the only thing that has failed? Well, so I haven't failed. Um, don't, oh, we're not going to talk about that, okay? <laughs> okay, guys, that was all. Leave us in the comments who's going to have a yeah. flat mattress. And we're going to give something away. Are you going to give something away? I like how Pedro's thinking ahead. Yeah, yeah. nailed it. Yes. Have you subscribed to the channel, by the way? Yeah, we're going to give away a Stealthy Hunter rifle cover. Oh. There you go. I like it. There you go. Leave us a comment. <laughs> Just got up to, <clears throat> got up this morning, stepped out the tent. Pedro looks over to the left bear I was like no bears silly bears don't get up this early bears are in bed except for sows and cubs they kind of seem to be more active when a boar would be sleeping still right now I just had the uh, sow and one cub I haven't seen the other cub but there's two two blonde it's like reddish it's like reddish, blonde, super light. Oh, there's the other cub. Oh, those cubs are like invisible. They just, they're hard to see. They just match the landscape. But that black sow, she just pops. We got sound two cubs right there, sound two cubs right there. This is a problem because we need boars. Pedro's letting us down. We need you to spot a boar. So, yeah, we need you to spot a boar. That's pretty cool, man. All right, day three. We're gonna head back to the tent, start into rain again, grab a coffee, 
and think about the plan. I'm scared. Brian wants us to do some mountaineering today. Well, we're tucked in here in the teepee and uh, just peeking through our window here, glassing from the comfort of our uh, cozy tent. We just Hopefully. need the sun to come out for those birds to come out to dry. It's, yeah, it's not usual that you would see, you know, we'll, we'll see bears any time of day, but you usually don't see bears out this you know at first light but it also rained all night and that was the first break in the clouds so we had like a 30 minute 40 minute you know patch of good weather and it looked like those that sound cub just popped out and started doing their thing as soon as it started to rain again they just started to mosey back to their timber patch. All right guys, so here's the thing. Brian is making, it's laughing a lot about my mattress, so I'm gonna play a little trick. And I'm gonna deinflate the mattress. A little bit so he believes that it's really bad. <laughs> Quick update. I'm starting to feel bad because now Brian is going all the way down to the river to try to find that hole in the mattress. I was gonna say something, but Ryan and Brady told me not to, so we are all in this. <laughs> We're all in it together. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see if he if he's able to find a hole or not. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna stick with my guns and not say anything, in hopes that eventually you do the right thing and are honest and say you just like to have a little funny joke. But I, I do kind of feel bad he's walking all the way down, losing all that elevation, wasting all those calories just to go check for a hole that doesn't exist. Ryan knows Brian really well, and he told me that he's gonna lose his mind. When I've seen Brian at his angriest, it's usually due to an air mattress issue. It's usually because he can't find the pinhole. So this one's gonna set him off. <laughs> but <clears throat> you know, I can't, he kind of deserves it after uh, his berating of you guys and your lightweight air mattresses yesterday. So it's a little bit of karma here, I think. Barely like eighth of an inch, not tight, and just a little bit of air was coming out of the valve. Now the valve wasn't tight. Valve wasn't tight. There's no holes. Just you know, gotta be diligent about twisting it all the way down. It's kind of like this, just kind of sitting there. Got to do that little extra, that little bit. Gotta make sure you do that. It came to my attention earlier, Pedro. Something, there's something strange going on. So far we've seen six, eight bears total, eight bears. We saw the one that I shot. We saw the one in the tree above that bear. We saw a sow, two cubs here, and then we saw the sow and two cinnamons over here. Um, I was thinking about it today and Pedro made sure to mention this. Um, because he's humble and all. He's so far seen every single bear. Ryan Lampers is usually a little sharper than this, but he is getting his 
his booty spanked by the Spaniard. So we're going to have to, the USA team is really struggling right now. Um, we're going to dig deep, see if we can't rally. Uh, my, my opinion is that um, none of the sows count. And I'm going to say the sow in the tree is also, uh, that was also a sow, the bear in the tree. So I'm going to say so far, although there were eight bears, only one of them counted. So Pedro's seen one so far. So we only need to spot one boar and we can tie the game. He's going from right to left? From left to right and oh, it's like right. very dark. Oh, I see it. You see it? Yeah, it's a I think you can see it. Cub. Yeah, no, the one I saw it's bigger, so there must okay, be yeah, another one. Not, uh, I see two cubs. Oh, there's, there's the mama. Yeah. Looks like a mama one cub so far, but... We spotted another bear, but it seems that it's another. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't count as a bear. It's not a boar. We've established the rules, Pedro, and... <laughs> okay, there's another cub. If it's yeah. a sow, it doesn't even exist. So that's... Uh, a sow and two cubs from the other night. I mean, that's 11 bears Pedro has seen, but really just one. Yeah, just one. Really just one still. Sow with cubs, that's the word. So far, nothing but sows and cubs today and yesterday. So, yeah, not much, no boars yet. I feel like just out of our sight of this big draw though, that we're gonna end up hiking up this thing to, tonight, we're gonna find a boar. I think that uh, Samhain is taking her cubs a little bit the other direction because there's a giant boar up in there. That's my theory. Well, making our way up. You can see Pedro up there. We're uh, gaining some serious elevation. We know where a sow and cub is right there. Sows and cubs over here. But every four or 500 feet, we just see so much more. I think we're gonna kill a bear today. It's just a matter of time before we find one if we keep moving. But we'll see. This is a serious grind. This pack has gotta be 85 pounds. With all the water. 12, 11 liters of water. I don't know how much that weighs, but it's heavy. Changes everything. But once you get up here, you never know if, how long we'll stay. And I've been up here where we, you know, you just gotta have enough water. It's worth the haul. Well, we decided we were gonna climb way up to the top of this little hill that we're on <clears throat> and look miles away to see if we couldn't spot bears and other drainages. And uh, should we say Team USA? Team USA is on the board. We just picked up a giant jet black that's many miles away. I don't know, Brady, what do you think? Two miles? I'm gonna go three miles. Two, I'm gonna go almost three. Three miles? It's easy, two and three quarters. <laughs> I'm gonna line it, sight it, distance. All right, so uh, since we picked up this bear that's a million miles away, we're gonna figure out exactly how far it is. Brady guessed what? Two and three quarter. Two and three quarter. So I just pulled up my measured distance tool on the uh, go hunt map. And the best that I can figure it, I got 2.54 miles from here. <laughs> it's pretty good. Elevation gain? Uh, That's the key thing. <laughs> there's some. There's loss. There's gain. He's a ways away. But I uh, think the good thing is, is we think that bear's going to be there for a while. We're not going to go chase him right now. We're going to continue up this, try to find some more. But we know where he's at for our return trip. And it's pretty daunting trying to get up there, isn't it, Pedro? I mean, that's goat country up there where he's at. I'm drinking my pride. 
I saw that stamp first, but technically I have to admit that Ryan called it. I quit on the stamp like two seconds before it moved. You so, thought the bear was a stamp? Yeah. And I watched it for a few minutes and like, ah, it's a stamp. Ten seconds later, it's like, right, and like, oh, I see a bear. Where? That same freaking place. Team Spain. That's no excuse. How many times have I heard that before? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the thing is that Ryan's technique is just to call everything just in case. You know, like to... <laughs> But it works, I mean, we have a confirmed bear. We haven't confirmed yet if it's a sow or a, or a boar, so I don't know if it should go on the scoreboard yet, but Definitely a boar. I'm so far ahead that I'm, I'm happy, you know, <laughs> three against one, but holding strong, holding tight. The team needed a little bit of motivation. They haven't seen anything in three days, so I kind of wanted to Throw us a bone. Ryan hiked that, hiked this mountain so fast to be the first one glassy that I felt so bad for him. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, I know Ryan's technique. Get to the top, glass before anybody else gets a chance, and then spot the bears. I think we should put some rules. You're not allowed to glass until everyone. I like. I like how he's thinking. What is his rule? His rule is no one's allowed to glass until we all get here at the same time and then it's three, two, go. That's ridiculous. <laughs> That's so serious. Ryan doesn't like that idea. I'm gonna give you guys a chance. Ryan's a professional. Jump on my team. What's that? I'm gonna give you guys a chance right now, some of you to jump on my team. <laughs> I mean, it's three against one. You have, but the, you have to say it right now. Not later, so anyone? High pressure tactics. Anyone? Three, two. I'm on your team. I mean, I shot your bear. Okay, right here. <laughs> <laughs> the most useless, the camera guy has to be my team. Let's see, guys. But Pedro, hey. I'm put this camera on you, I'm gonna make you look sexy. Okay? You are a great team, buddy. Thanks. Appreciate it. And since you're calling the rules, I think we should now count the sows. That way we are way ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sows count as a half a bear. That's a good margin ahead now. Yeah. So Team Spain... 5-1 or something? Changing the rules up mid-game. That's like, that's like playing cards and not knowing the real rules and then just going at it. Oh, now we're ahead. And just because we're ahead now, now we win. Brady is so disappointed that he hasn't glass anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's packing like 20 pounds of optics. <laughs> I just bring things for show, for looks. You know, look good, hunt good. That's my motto. Well, I spotted a what looks like a cinnamon chocolate bear. Um, just over here on this slope. He kind of went behind this little hill. So we're gonna climb a little higher. Ryan's got eyes on him right now with the spotter. Could be a shooter, I don't know. He's a little small looking to me, but you never can tell until you get the spotter up. Pretty color though, like cinnamon, red, like just shining like a diamond over there. The important thing is that we scored. That's right. E Team Spanish grit. We're on the table. We're gritty right. Spaniards. We'll figure it out. It was a gritty move because we were all glassing here and Brian went ahead to kind of glass a different area. And uh -huh. Teamwork. I, I used Ryan's trick. <laughs> Climbed up here, hit some virgin land where no one's looked yet. Found me a bear. We have been glassing for a few hours from from here, so two bears, but super far away. And actually, they don't look pretty big. So now we are walking the ridge line to try to get different angles from the mountain. Like sometimes, just moving a couple hundred meters can give you a completely different view of the same mountain range. So and that can pay off and provide a lot of 
new country to to glass so that's what we're doing keep moving forward and keep looking for that big boar So we, uh, for those that are wondering, I guess, we got this tarp we quick threw up. It's something I carry all the time. It's a DST from Seek outside. Um, super lightweight, it's 10 by 10. Really easy to set up when you get a big rain squall that comes over. I mean, literally, we put it up in about a minute. Um, use the trekkers, use these Peaks trekkers. Uh, two trekkers on the side, one main trekker in the middle kind of keeps it up off our head. And then just some guy outlines and super, super fast to throw up, which is really handy this time of year, the spring season, we always get rain squalls. Um, I think I've already thrown this thing up this year probably 15 times just from big old shots of rain coming in. So super handy, kind of have to have it. I'd say it's a must have. Um, and it folds up into nothing. It really packs down nice, so pretty valuable piece of gear for spring bear hunting, I'd say. Yeah. And we can still glass at the same time. Like, we still had a canyon to look at, so it's not like we lost <laughs> any time by, like, oh, we're going to huddle out of a storm really quick and not do anything. Yeah, I love pitching these things, like, on a little bit of a slant. Uh, this is just set up really easy, so you can kind of tack the backside and then use the trekkers for the front side and get a nice big open here in front of us that one center trekker just makes it uh, about perfect so yep this is ideal bad. I dig it mm -hmm. Pedro son of Pepe quick tip as a mountain hunter you really need to develop the skill of power napping anywhere anytime five minutes recharge energies and be ready that was a tip This is bear, Brady. I'm doing my best. It's about time that you do something for the team. I know it really is. <laughs> I haven't really done much. <laughs> got really good digiscope footage. That's about it. Is that 60 frames? Pedro? Is that slow motion? What do you think? Yes. <laughs> Can you stop micromanaging my stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll stop micromanaging your stuff. <laughs> micro. <laughs> it's micro. micro. Oh. Is it raining ice or whatever you said it was last night? We don't want to talk about this on the camera. <laughs> this is private conversation. <laughs> yeah. You want me to film? Are we, this Brian Cole? Are we feel I'm gonna fi like Brian Cole. <laughs> film the snow. <laughs> this feels like uh, mm. like okay, guys, wrap up. Mid October mule deer hunt. Right here. Yeah.
This is not what spring bear weather is supposed to be like. Um, it's socked in. It's snowing. It's not cold. It's just wet. Yeah. Now we'll see what the weather brings tomorrow. But so this day is ended badly because uh, we didn't get our our magic hour of glassing here at the end of the day because it's mm. socked in with fog and rain and turned into snow. We just did pick up, like right before this came in, a fresh new cinnamon, looked like a medium. Looked better than all the other bears we saw today. I think that black is bigger, mm. or big. Mm. So it didn't... He's end. in like an impossible place right now. Pedro has it on his camera. Oh, you got yeah. long lens on it? Show me your uh, photo you took hmm. what? of where that bear was. Okay. I'll show you right now. <laughs> Cut. Movie over. <laughs> Day's done. No bears. No bears. See you guys tomorrow. Ciao. I woke up because I was having a nightmare that this thing was gonna be like <laughs> It wasn't fun, funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was intense. It got a little wild there for a minute. It seems to have passed. Um, I, we that. might. <laughs> don't, don't even dare to say that. <laughs> we might be in the eye of the storm, and there, <laughs> there's more to come. I had to grab the bottom of this tent, suck it to the ground because it was catching wind. It was gonna just pop off this ridge like a kite oh looks like we're in a we're well we're just gonna wait and see <laughs> i'm soaking wet over here uh it was funny for a couple of minutes but it, at some point it wasn't anymore <laughs> we really thought that the tent was gonna fly away so just in case something happens we have put all the gear on our backpacks, put the rain cover on the packs, put the cameras also on waterproof bags and everything. I got even the rain gear on, just in case one of the stakes comes out to be able to get out and don't get wet and be ready for whatever. I don't know. I cannot sleep anymore now. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I reached to a point that I was like, Hey Brian, I'm gonna deinflate the mattresses just so they don't fly away. <laughs> oh, I've done this at least once. W once or twice every bear season. And so far, I've never I've never had a uh, TP blow off the mountain. <laughs> Knock on wood. But uh yeah. It did seem a little intense there for a minute. I got to admit the whole thing like caved in but she's still standing I don't want to have to go outside and check the stakes but that's why we rocked out the tent stakes big old heavy rocks and you know we want to see what these uh, shelters can withstand and I think she was right at the limits the breaking points were close <laughs> but I'll sleep like a baby now since Pedro can't sleep, he'll keep an eye out while I take a nap. I'll catch you in the morning. It's time to go back to sleep. Pedro, 
I once had you, to... You stand guard, okay? I'll do. Good night. I'll keep an eye. You still wearing your rain gear? This is missing all of air. <laughs> Pedro's, Pedro's sleeping in his rain gear. <laughs> Oi! F I don't know. I think he's. Damn it. Oh, she's flat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to laugh. Yeah, pretty much flat. This was the day I predicted it would go flat. <laughs> <laughs> Winner, winner, chicken dinner. It's pretty flat. Oh. Uh, because you got a paper mache air pad. <laughs> good morning. Is, is it really a good morning? Feels like it's Christmas morning. I mean, it's got a bunch of snow and Santa's gonna bring us some gifts. If Santa comes, I hope he brings us a bear. That's what I want. All right, we woke up to a lot of snow. Everything is white. So the black bears are in trouble. They're gonna be easy to find. This doesn't feel like spring bear hunting anymore. Is this no good or is it bad for us? It's not good, not great. Hopefully the snow melts quick. But I don't know how much the bears are gonna be moving around in the snow. It's probably gonna be, they're either gonna drop down to the bottom or hunker down, I don't know but the snow line actually goes way down, like way down. So that bear you guys saw yesterday, there's even snow that low. But we may have to drop way, way down to the creeks, way down to the rivers. And I'm, I'm trying to burn a tick, and I run out of fuel. Lucky buster. Come on! <laughs> burn! I got some gas. Yeah, I, we need some gas. This is sadistic. Now he's gonna get it. So you put it right in the middle. You go through the mic. <laughs> oh! That's so satisfying. <laughs> you dead, Pedro? Yeah, ready for eating. <laughs> we eat what we kill. <laughs> yeah, catch like 10 diseases. Uh, burnt? Yeah, it's crispy. Stinks. It's like the third tick we've seen on this trip, I think. You might need to do a tick check. One could be crawling right up your armpit right now. That one was sluggish. You wanna see me naked? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you, you do a tick I, on I your think own. Brian keeps trying to abuse <laughs> on me. You guys getting ready to start a fire over there? We got enough wood to last for me. This is getting boring. This is getting boring. <laughs> <laughs> Give us an update. It keeps snowing. It's snowing harder and harder. So we are waiting here inside our tents to see if the weather gets a bit better. 
the snow is not a problem. The thing is that we cannot glass because it's like super foggy. So trying to watch a couple of movies, recover. We have a little problem with my mattress situation. I don't know, it's getting close to the giveaway time. It has popped a couple of times. So basically these two chambers have popped. Yeah, there's a baffle here and here. But there's a baffle here and here that isn't anymore that that, that came undone which is a, a good design upgrade because now you have like kind of a pillow <laughs> but i think we're getting close to give away that stealthy hunter <laughs> anyway back to back to our movie we're gonna do a deal or not <laughs> dun, 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 dun. i have the battery i'm on a schedule You see the only light patch that there is on that mountain right now? Yeah. It's on that white patch? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a bigger bear. I think it's the brown one. It's definitely medium, huh? It's hard to tell. He's, uh, he's not small. Yeah. He's not one of the little pitter-patters, but... He's at least a medium. Can you measure? He's really, open? he's a slow mover. Like he hasn't moved much at all. Let's go. Oh yeah, hold on, let me see him. Just a second here. Could you like measure with go hunt? I could roughly measure it, yeah. How far is from the wave? Gosh, he just doesn't move much. See is his ass right now. He goes sideways on there really easy. Yeah. Alright, well we picked up the bear. We picked up the bear that we saw last night. And uh looks like a cinnamon kind of darker on his lower end, kind of lighter on his top end. Beautiful coat on him. So we've just been watching him. He hasn't moved much from where he was, and he's not moving much now. He's just grabbing some sunlight. So we're probably gonna break down camp here and try to make a play, try to get over there and see if we can relocate him once we get there. <clears throat> he's only 1.7 miles away. Less than two miles, that's not bad, right? <laughs> but just beautiful coat on him. And I like that he's in a really cool spot too. He didn't move at all from last night. Yep. There's no easy way to get him. No, there's really not. There's a in rough river crossing involved. All the things. Rough distance is 1.7 from right here. Yep. And there's a lot of valleys in between us that we gotta go up and over. But I like that he hasn't moved at all from last night. It took us all day to get up here yesterday to see one on the other side, farther than we came from yesterday. Yep, we could have been at the first camp the entire time and found all the bears. <laughs> That's should, the way it goes. Should have never left. Oh well. distance it's so nice to go down on those sandy spots it is all right you're saying you don't like a good adventure pedro i want to get to it very fast before he beds down Pedro's you get weather speed. weather in again and getting this bear dead We checked on the map also like the distance <clears throat> and we think that from the other side of the river we can get maybe a 500 yard shot, who knows. So yeah. 
There is a lot of things to do. We need to get there. If it's a good bear, shoot it. Get to the bear, cross the river, pack it down, meet. Three in the morning again. <laughs> so the way I see it on this map is we can't avoid this rock field. Yeah. If we want to. Just by going down a little bit. Just by going down and then cutting north before you can see the cliff faces. Yeah. And that's why I like satellite imagery. Yeah. Because to topo makes it look really easy. Like, oh yeah, just shoot over here, get on this little ridge. But cliff faces. We gotta try to avoid those cliff faces. Nasty stuff. So, angle down, angle to the right. Yeah. Get below this rock field. Because I like the idea of going back to places we've already been, rather than shooting down and getting cliffed out somewhere down there. And that would be messy, and it's always thick in the bottom. We can just run that ridge all the way out. But there isn't a massive trail okay. by the river. Mm -hmm. That one? Mm hmm Like a hiking. Let's do it. Let's get plan. Again. There's nothing sticky, sketchy about this at all. That's suicidal. <laughs> I'm gonna crawl like a leaser. There's not even bark on that. I'm like a cat though, agile, swift, like a gymnast in a ballerina all tied up into one. You don't like water? But also masculine. Any of your lives. <laughs> So, <laughs> I have already got wet multiple times, so I'm not scared. <laughs> You make that look sexy, Ryan. <laughs> <Don't I? laughs> yeah. Uh, it's as coordinated as I could be. <laughs> uh. Standing up though. Don't fall at the finish line. Yeah, finish strong. <laughs> that was close. I'm like a cat. Like a cat. <laughs> and through the jungle we go. That crossing was pretty sketchy. But we are all like cats, so we, we did pretty well. I think I'm more of a, a black cat, kind of sly, easing into things. I'm still waiting for that time that Brian Call takes a, takes a dip in a creek. It hasn't happened yet. 
but we got a lot more creek crossings, so maybe, maybe on this trip we're gonna see it. All right, well, we've been climbing all the way down to the bottom here, down by the water, and we're starting to get in a position where we might be able to pick him up, so we're hoping to glass him here pretty quick. We're looking for that cinnamon that we saw. So we're probably gonna have to skirt a little bit so we can get better glass on what we can't see. So right now, we're just not picking them up, but a little bit further, we should uh, have them in our sights. We got a big old mama, big old mama with a teeny tiny cub, probably the smallest cub I've ever seen, um, just straight across from us. And she's chucking rocks off the mountain. She's huge, big old sow. She's like picking up rocks and they're rolling, crashing down the rocky cliff. What do you think of her size? Healthy. So she's she's pretty big. She's a, she's a beefcake for a sow. She looks pretty old. <laughs> Dude, look at her chuck this rock off the mountain. Oh, wow. Look at that. Here it comes. Mm -hmm. That's this crazy. Rock. Rock is just There's that cub. Bombing off the hill. Well, we were just sitting here after our last little interview talking about where uh, Cinnamon was and we're watching Mama Bear with a little cub and look straight across from us at our level and there's another small little, it's like, I can't believe it doesn't have Mama running with it. It's pretty small, jet black. And Pedro's passing again. I have, I have a question for you guys. It's a theory. Why do you think the bear has such a tiny cub compared to other ones. Can they breed like twice? If a boar kills the little ones, can they get in heat? And that's why that cub is late compared to the other ones that we have seen? What are the other ones are two years old? A year and a half. Yeah, we've seen all sizes now. This is a tiny little thing. And then we've seen the little butterballs. And then, you know, these two blondes we saw over here were pretty big. Those look like two year cubs they're probably just kicked off oh they raced way up didn't they they're blasting way up the hill mama we're getting there almost down to the a little plateau and then uh See if we can pick up this chocolate again. Don't know if we can or not. But uh, it's gotta be there. There's no there's no place for it to really go. So pretty sure the weather turned again. Started getting a little snow flurries and lots of wind. But anyway. Almost to the we're gonna at least stop over here and then decide what to do. It started to hail again. The bear has vanished, but we believe that it's probably bed down in that creek. We are around 600 yards, 600, 700, depending on where he's bedded. It's hailing right now. Um, bears are not as stupid, so they are doing the same thing. Probably the bear is doing the same thing that we are doing. We have put the shelter up, and we are gonna wait this bear to see if he comes back up, see the distance, see if we need to put a stock or not. But we we feel better by relocating the bear just in case it changes drainages or, or whatever, because as soon as we cross to the other side, our visibility is gonna decrease a lot. So we're gonna be patient. All signs point to this bear is on this face right now, which is really, really exciting. And we're in position. So we're just gonna sit back, put glass on it, see what happens. It's the most exciting time of the day. When you got a bear located, you just gotta relocate him and then make a plan. Now he's in the open. That's a boar. That's a boar, dude. We found our cinnamon, he's up in the top here. 
he's quite a poke, but we got to watch him come across his face, and he's going into this drainage. Yep. This one, though, he's, I think he's just going down, getting a drink of water. Hopefully he comes down towards us. Or he's going to go right back to his green patch. He's got the most lush green patch on the mountain right there, so I'm hoping he goes back to it. They like those, they like that water. They do. They like, they like having water close by right now. And the drainage that he was sleeping in has no water, you can see it. But the one that he's uh, heading into right now has got a creek coming right down it. But not much feed, so I'm guessing he's just gonna get a little drink and head back to where he was. But really cool brown muzzle on him, very cool coat, cinnamon colored. Um, or lighter brown. I think he's a bear worth taking. Um, yeah, That's it's just bear. a very, very cool color, but good bear. Yeah, he might shock us. He might be bigger than we think. He's just moving. He's a slow mover, yeah. It's like he just woke up because he has not moved much. He was in front of us this whole time. He's probably been sleeping for hours. And, um, just in a spot that you just glass right over and never know that there was a bear there. But it's only 150 yards up and over to get some water. So hopefully he plops right back to the green patch and then we're, he's within a range if he, uh, if he goes back to that, which is where we saw him last night and this is where we saw him this morning. He's also walking real stiff leg. Oh, he's coming down. Yeah, you should probably just get behind the rifle, get comfortable. Don't shoot if you don't feel good. He's thick. That's a dead bear right there. I still think we got all day. We got a couple hours of daylight left. And uh, I just think he's gonna get a little closer. So we're gonna wait. Yeah, he's, he's coming. All right, so the bear finally came out of a spot we've been staring at for a long time. And he went over through his cliff bank without he to get some water, maybe he did. And now he's going on some mountain goat trails, skirting along or wondering how this bear's gonna get off of this, but hopefully he comes off to the right a little bit more. We'll actually have a chance to uh, possibly take a shot if we feel comfortable. So we're just kind of waiting it out. Figuring out some situations. Right now I'm basically just gathering a bunch of data through the Kestrel and my rangefinder and just matching it and testing out different winds, making sure where the wind's coming from. And I'm actually looking up on the mountain at some of the brush and like grass and how it's moving and trying to compare it to what I see here to make sure it's uh, the same here and there so we know an accurate, accurate calculated uh, windage. I don't have a lot of wind, like right now it's two and a half to five, kind of from the two o'clock. And I'm just trying to confirm that this wind is, you know, the best of my ability, the same up there. And then we can say, hey, there's another bear. Ryan, 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 Ryan. There's another bear right here. They're right in front of us. On the bottom cliff. I see it, I see it. Small. You see it? Who's spotting all the bears today? Pedro. <laughs> Who's spotting all the bears? Hey, little bugger was in there. I'm so proud of you. Just for you, I'm bottom bear. Like 
Let's open this mega giant. Over there. Last for a second. <laughs> this bear's goofy and little. He's rubbing up on this bush. This guy? Yeah, the one I saw you this morning. Huh? The one I did? Oh, yeah. It's a pretty dang bear. That's a, that's a 60 pounder. That bear up on the hill would eat him. He's right there. Whoa, he's gonna fall. <laughs> <laughs> Look at a monkey. Oh, Look at that. It's rock climbing. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That's cool. He's in that wet creek. Yeah, he's wet, I could tell. <laughs> We're in the waterfall. There he is. We watched that bear, he just stayed out of range. And then we saw him go way up here under the rocks. Like there's nothing there except cliffs and rocks and steep, steep country. And then as this, uh, these snow flurries started to hit the mountain, he just tucked into some rocks, probably a cave right in there or a little shelter cove. Uh, and he went back in there and disappeared and we haven't seen him come out. It's been about 45 minutes now and doesn't look like he's probably gonna come out uh, tonight. I think he's gonna sleep the night away there and in the morning, I think he's gonna come back down and then feed over here where he was earlier today on these green slopes, which would put him in rifle range. So we'll see. He just didn't do what we wanted him to do tonight. Um, just the way it went, but we're on him. We just need to not make a mistake, and he should be ours. So we're going to set up camp, and then, um, yeah, we'll see you guys in the morning.
All right. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. It was a long one, an hour and 10 minutes. I'm glad you stuck with it. Uh, if you're still watching, thank you, thank yep. you, thank you. We have some giveaways we're going to announce. We also have some prize packages we're going to announce. We're also going to talk a little bit more about this film in more detail. Before we get into the film detail, though, and what went on in Pedro's dirty, dirty deed, <laughs> we're going to talk about um, the giveaway we have going on right now with Go Hunt and with Stealthy Hunter. Yep. Uh, Stealthy put a big package together. He's got uh, PSE bow, the XF Evo, which is what I've got right here. Yep. He's got a dozen arrows, broadheads, uh, stone glacier pack. Goat knife. Goat knife. Trip to the Western Hunting Summit. Yes, a big package. Yep. Uh, when you shop over there, you are entered to win. And when you use the code GRITTY, you get a discount. So if you don't have a rifle cover, you don't have a glassing pad, or if you need some nutritional supplements for your gut, for your joint health, yep. the CBD oil, the sleep gummies, the the CBD gummies are good. The immune probiotic is the one that I live on every day. E-Charge. E-Charge. Yeah, that's their their electrolyte blend. Yep. Stealthy has a myriad of things that are great. When you when you go over there and you shop right now and you use the code GRITTY, you're entered to win that prize package. Plus, you get 10% off site-wide. So check that out. Go Hunt. Go Hunt is doing a similar package. We've got a PSE bow. We've got arrows. We've got an Everly st stock bino harness, which I'm really liking, by the way. I've got one. I'm playing around with it. I like my marsupial gear, but I, I'm actually really impressed with Everly stocks bino harness. Yep. Um, Annihilator broadheads. $500 uh, gift card yep. to the uh, Go Hunt shop. And so you get entered to win all this stuff. When you go and you use the code GRITTY at Go Hunt, yep. you can go to the gear shop. Every dollar you spend uh, or $25 you spend gets you an entry into the contest for the prize package. And everything you buy, mostly everything you buy at the gear shop at Go Hunt is 10% off. Yep. And uh, if you get the maps, you can get the maps for 30 bucks essentially, because when you pay $50 for the maps, you get a $20 store credit that you could use at the Go Hunt gear shop. Yep. Uh, last week, there were some errors with the code. It wasn't working, but if you go on there now, it's all ironed out. So when you use the code GRITTY for the maps, you get $20 store credit. And if you get the insider membership using the code GRITTY, then you get 50, 50 entries to the contest. So big contest plus good deals. Go on over. Check out Go Hunt. Check out Stealthy. Use the code across the board. You're going to save and uh, be entered to win. Last week, we, we asked you all to leave a comment, and we promised that we would give away a set of Peaks trekking poles, Peaks gaiters, and a headlamp, a duo backcountry headlamp. Yep. And we would give away a Stealthy Hunter rifle color, cover and a glassing pad, all of it to one person uh, for leaving a comment, liking, and subscribing to our channel. Yep. So, Brad is scrolling, scrolling, scrolling through YouTube right now. Yep. And Brad's going to select some lucky winner. Brad, now, who do we got? Randy Trimble. Great hunt. Always enjoy the humor, hard work that goes into your hunts. There you go, Randy. Thank you, everyone, for leaving a comment. We try to read them all. We're, we're, we're keeping up, mostly. If you leave a comment, we try to read it. Yep. Uh, we figure that's the least we can do. So, thank you. Instagram winner for the goat knife. That's right. We have a goat knife we're giving away, the Ibex, the skinning blade, the yep. super lightweight, replaceable blade knife. Uh, Brad, who do we got? Jeff from? Holbrook. His Instagram is Core Blow, and it says, that bear didn't care about your calls, but my dog sure was curious. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Congratulations. Both of you email us at grittybowman at grittybowman.com. Yep. Give us your mailing address, and we'll get these prizes sent off to you right away. All right, Brad. Let's talk about this hunt. Yeah. Um, so, Pedro... Pedro is a mal hombre. <laughs> I don't really speak Spanish, so I'm not sure how you say that. But I did use the Google and figured out how to say bad man. And, Pedro, uh, you're a boss. Good Pedro's, job. Pedro's a mad bad man. <laughs> and uh, so are Ryan and uh, Brady, for that matter. So uh, I get home. I'm going over the footage. I'm editing the film, slaving away on uh, what we've got, this content. And I'm... I come across and I'm watching this section where Pedro picks up the camera and lets the air out of my pad. <laughs> I was filled with emotion, uh, like mixed emotions, mostly fury, rage, resentment, betrayal, hurt. I hear There's a lot of a mixed, a lot of emotions at one time. Yep. Just processing. Um, yeah. And Brad's in the room next to me and I did call him a name, four letter word, a few of them. <laughs> And then I had Brad like come over here and watch this. 
Well, I thought he was mad at me. And then he's like, come watch this. Like, doesn't say anything else. Just come watch this. Oh. And that was a good time. That was oh, Pedro. dirty, good that dirty, was good dirty. One. That was low. It was really low. And uh, Ryan and Brady, I mean, once I finished watching it, I realized that all three of them were <laughs> to blame. Uh, at any time, any one of those so-called friends could have prevented me the yeah, walk of shame the down to the river, the river and back. Uh, but I did get down there, and I'm, like, looking for a hole. I could not find a hole. And then I held the valve underwater, and all this air was coming out. And I was like, oh, the valve. When Pedro did his dirty deed, he didn't screw it down all the way. Mm-hmm. So I left the river going, oh, dang it. I, I just to tighten a, that. Just a, like a tiny little turn was undone, I guess. I mean, it's only logical because I never thought that my friend would betray me so badly. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I sent them the middle finger emoji on the phone in a group text, and uh, and I uh, moved on. Yep. So anyway, that's how that went down. And, no, it was really fun. Hanging out with Pedro, Brady, and uh, Ryan is just a blast. Um, last week, I mentioned, I gave a shout-out to Pedro. This week, I want to give a shout-out to Brady Miller. Yep. Brady is um, it, a very experienced, especially mule deer hunter, the hunter in general. Uh, he was a great addition on this trip. He ends up taking a beautiful bear. Yep. Spoiler alert. Um, and uh, But if you haven't seen any of Brady's films, you're probably living under a rock. But I would recommend two. There's two that I really like. One is Below Zero. That one came out a while back. I remember seeing it for the first time. Uh, they take a 204-inch mule deer. Yep. It's beautiful. It's a, it's, a, it's a snowy struggle hunt. It's miserable, just our kind of hunt, and with a triumphant uh, achievement yeah. in the end where he gets himself a unicorn on a basic, I think a basic public land type tag. So yep. anyway, that one's really cool. I'll put the link in the description here in the video, as well as the other video I really like is, he just came out with it mm-hmm. a couple months ago, a month ago? Yeah, yep, about two months ago probably. It's called One More Ridge. Yep. And again, it's another struggle hunt. I don't see much, don't see much, don't see much. It's well filmed. I love the quiet solitude that the film gives you. Yeah. I, I like the slower paced films. You guys can tell from my films generally, you know, I just let nature play. And uh, I think there's there's a lot of value in that, especially in the hectic world that we live in that's modern civilization. Go, 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 go. Yep. If you can sit down and I'm in a hunt, I don't want too much music. You know, I just want to feel like I'm outside in nature. Yep. And connect. And uh, I try to do that with the films we come out with. One of the questions Pedro asked in the film was, you know, um, why are there so many cubs? Why is there so many cubs? And there's what we've realized over the years, and we, we kind of heard about this. We knew about it before. But when you slay a couple of big bears in an area and you come back years later, um, you have cubs everywhere. Yeah. That's just a testament to how much those big boars are killing all the cubs and all the juveniles they can come across. And when you take a region and you remove some of those, some of the bears we've taken are 16, 18 years old plus. These are ancient bears. They've been around a long time, and they just go through and systematically remove the competition. Think about it. A bear has to survive to be two, three years old, four years old to compete. And in that time frame, living in the same vicinity as these giants, right. we would never see hardly any bears. And then on this hunt, we're seeing tons of sows and cubs, but no mature boars or few. So um, it's a function of that. Pedro asked, you know, is it possible that they he didn't quite understand the gestation of a bear. So a lot of you might not be aware of this, but bears are fascinating because when a sow breeds with a boar, she does that in yep. June, typically they breed. She does not conceive at that time. No, technically the, the sperm goes inside and I could be getting the technicalities of this wrong, but Hey, we're going to dumb this down. The gist is the the sperm goes in and attaches to like, like some kind of uh, like a not a sack, but yeah, some kind of like inside the body. It just sort of finds a right. spot and it forms like a catalyst around it, and um, and it a cocoon or whatever, and then that sperm just sits there and waits. Yep. Right. 
And then the sow goes in, digs a den, climbs in. Now, the den is like October, November. It's a lot later than um, when she conceived in, when she got, or when she got bred in June. So she's bred in June. She's still not pregnant. Yeah. She's still not pregnant. That little critter, that little, that little sperm is like waiting there. And what the sow's body does, she goes in, she, she prepares to go into hibernation. And I think she begins hibernation and if, or it's within the first week of hibernation uh, or denning, her body senses she's denning. Hormones shift, and if she is able, yep, healthy enough, healthy enough, she will, she will consume, she will that that sperm will break loose, and she will actually conceive at that point. Yep. So, in theory, all the sows are kind of getting pregnant about the same time in the first week they den. Yep. Even though they were bred back in June. Yep. If her body is not capable of sustaining uh, a couple of cubs. And herself through the winter because she didn't have enough to survive hibernation. Yep. Her body will flush the sperm and will not allow the sow to become yep. pregnant at all. So nature is doing its thing. Yeah, uh, pretty interesting. And um, and it's impressive when they when the cubs are born. I mean, they are so tiny. The mother basically has no idea what's going on. Yeah, what are they? They're like they're they're tiny. They come out kind of like a chipmunk baby. Yeah, right. Um, yep. And they uh, like tiny, they're tiny. They nestle their way. They kind of find their way to. They're kind of like a marsupial. Yep, a like lot of their a teeth. lot of their development and happens outside the womb instead of inside the womb. Right. And the mother is hibernating the whole time in the den, and the the cub is growing on the outside of the mother's body. Yep. Uh, and feeding, and the the cubs are alert and awake, but the mother is actually sleeping. She's pretty through. lethargic. She's sleeping all of it. through pregnancy, birth. And the feeding. Yep. <laughs> right. Lucky, lucky sow. Right. And then uh, she wakes up and she has these cute little furry babies. And uh, so in theory, most of these, because they den and they hibernate at about the same time, most of the cubs should be relatively the same size in a certain yep. area because the, the, the sows, uh, but you could have, you know, some sows will den a month before a different sow. Right. Um, weeks ahead, earlier. And so you, that could account for some size difference is timing. Like if a, if a sow did decide to den much later, um, in my experience too, you would think the big fat ones would den first cause they're, they got all they need. Mm-hmm. But actually I think that I, I, I'm, this is what I have seen anecdotally is that the bigger bears sometimes don't even den at all. Yeah. They just coast through the winter and just keep eating and don't even den. They right. get a little sleepy but they don't actually hibernate. So that's that's another interesting phenomenon. But in theory, you know, the the conceiving of the baby and then the age of the cubs yeah. would have a lot to, it has everything to do with when the mother decides to actually hibernate, right. go into hibernation. So there you have it, the butchered version at a high level <laughs> of how it works between a sow and a cub. So, you know, at the end of this hunt on this film, okay? I'm not going to tell you what happens next week. You're going to have to tune in. But right now we we have that bear and he went so high, he went up like to 800 yards. Now we had that bear within shooting range. Comes mm-hmm. out, he's in range, but he's a poke. He's still a little farther, further than I want to shoot. Lampers got set up on the rifle and he debated. He had the tra- chance. He could take that bear. Yep. And uh, Brady got set up later as the bear all indications were that that bear would do what he had done. We'd seen him a couple of times before and that day before. Right. And then that day again, he had come all the way down to give us a 380, 400 yard shot from across the river. But this time he came across and he stayed up there at that five, 600. And so Ryan was hoping he was, it looked like he was going to come down and give us a 350, 380 yard shot. Didn't work. So, Brady switched onto the rifle because Brady's actually quite comfortable and more experienced shooting long range yep. and uh, more willing to do that too. So Brady got set up very comfortable and he almost shot him. Yep. But when the bear finally did come out, when Brady did decide, okay, I'm going to shoot it, 
you could see the snow was coming down and the wind was going pretty hard. Yeah. And it was like, now we're dealing with a long shot and weather. Yep. And we also debated, we thought, well, th- what are the odds that the bear comes back down the mountain tomorrow morning? Like he denned up because it got nasty. What's he going to do? The same thing he's done three or four days in a row. He's going to come out of those rocks and come down the mountain. So next week you're going to have to tune in and see what happens. We were patient. We were waiting for our play to, to, to play out. The goal is not to take a shot that's not a sure shot. Yep. Um, did patience burn us this time? Or is it going to pay off? Anyway, we're hoping you're enjoying this episode, this series we put together. The next episode is pretty triumphant. Uh, tune in next Sunday. Uh, leave us a comment, like, and subscribe to the channel. You're entered to win a pair of Peaks trekking poles. And also, uh, if you share our film on Instagram, you're entered to win a Peaks headlamp. A Peaks headlamp. Yep. Do us a favor on all that. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget about the Go Hunt giveaway and the Stealthy Hunter giveaway. Get yourself over to the Go Hunt gear shop, the maps, the insider membership, or get yourself over to Stealthy Hunter and uh, purchase some products over there, and you will be entered to win big prize packages. Plus, use the code GRITTY, and you get discounts across the board. Thank you for tuning in. Stay gritty.